Hello Virgo. This is a reading for a large number of people, although when I pray and prepare, I do ask that each of you receives at least one message. So let's go ahead. I actually have some new cards. This should be pretty fun and exciting. We are going to start with these. So these two cards are going to be the key. Okay, they'll explain the key to us as we work our way through this. Okay, we're going to do a nine card spread. We will have past, present, future. And let's put these down. And then, okay. And then on the bottom of the deck, and actually I'm going to pull that out. And then, since these cards are slippery, I don't want to knock them all down because that'll happen. Okay. So we have past, present, future. This again was the bottom of the deck. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that right there. And this is kind of like, actually I'll move it down where you guys can see it. So this is kind of like the, you know, the bottom of the deck is the overall energy. So they're saying this will be, this is after the completion. So when you look at this past, present, future, this is the exit actions, which will lead to this. So this is the, the culmination, the results, the outcome. And then we have the center core situation. Now what they're saying with the key, the cards that we put underneath that, those are the key to, to breaking you out of this situation. And so, so this situation, this is the eight. In his cards, they have different meanings. So this would be anything with that little magnifying glass in this deck that is analysis traditional tarot would be cups so this would essentially be the eight of cups eight of analysis and this is the the core central root of the issue this is the core situation if you look he's like standing at the entrance of the building because sherlock holmes he worked with all different types of people he worked with the very high end upper class he worked with ordinary people when people needed assistance when they needed help they needed trouble they needed some enlightenment they needed him to shed some light on things they, they would go and see him seek him out and you see that you've got this figure he's he's standing outside of Holmes' office and he's looking up but he's hesitant he's he's kind of afraid to knock and, and go inside and it's because he actually fears having to face the, the great detective, actually having to share truth, because you see it's kind of like foggy around him. There's like fog. He fears meeting with the detective. He fears sharing the truth more than he fears getting over his troubles. It's like the, the having to do that, the having to face that. So instead he just, he just stands outside, staring at the door. And this card, it's all about, you know, needing help, looking for help. You know, finding new values, searching for new values, reconsidering our options before it's too late, abandoning plans that we had and rethinking them and, and going down a different path. It also speaks about, you know, being dissatisfied with an area of life that we really need to pay attention to. So like we have an area that we're not happy with, but we're, we're ignoring it. We're not dealing with it. This is also emotional ambivalence or you know, failure to commit to something, failing to commit to do something, uh, feeling abandoned or falling out of love, being unable to satisfy our partners, self-pity, withdrawal, withdrawal of desire, withdrawal of love, and really you know, moving away from old beliefs, moving away from old ways of doing things, and also really needing to take a, take a new look at things, look at things from a new perspective, a new vantage point. And so for many of you, you're actually trying to make a decision between like, if you look here, you've got these, these two lights on either side of him. You're trying to decide between the past and the future. You're trying to choose between two things. It's a total new way of doing things, but you're afraid. You're afraid to do that. You're afraid to take those actions, fearful of taking those steps. Because for some of you, it's in order to move forward, to have that change, you're going to have to have some conversations where the truth is shared. And even the thought of that has you shaken in your boots. Some of you, it could even scare you so much. You know, when, when, you, when, when they're younger, when kids are younger, little boys might piddle themselves all out of fear. You're just, you're shaking in your boots. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can have this conversation. I don't know if I can deal with this. And for some of you, it's even, it's even struggling to make 
make this decision. You want to stop things that you've done in the past. You want to have a change of things, but you're very fearful. You, you place value on new things. So sometimes, you know, we may find ourselves that things that we used to value, we don't value the same. So maybe, maybe in the past we valued money. We were all about making money. We were all about having the top of the line car and house because we really wanted to impress the Joneses and that's what it was all about. But, but now things have shifted. Now we want something that's more meaningful. We realize, okay, we can have all the money in the world, but we, we're still lonely. We're still miserable. We're still not happy. We can have that job that we love, but if we're constantly traveling and we, we never get to have a home time, we never get to have a foundation stability. It may have been exciting in the past to be traveling constantly nonstop, but now we want some stability. We want a foundation. But for a number of you, it's, it's like what, what you valued, what you wanted in life has changed. Or for some of you, you're trying to make that decision. Now, what we'll do is we will start with the past we'll work our way over. So in the past, you have, I think this is swords. Yeah, okay. So in his deck, like swords are observation, cups are analysis, pentacles are deduction, I think, and wands are like evidence. So you have the seven of swords, the four of cups, seven of swords observation, four of cups analysis, then you have a major arcana, the crooked man, for present, we have the Seven of Cups analysis, we have the Eight of Cups analysis, and then we have the Nine of Swords observation. And that's interesting, you go from seven, eight to nine. Things were escalating from bad to worse. Then you have the Four of Wands evidence, you have the Ten of Pentacles, which is deduction, and then you have two cards here. You have the Five of Cups analysis, and another major arcana, the Bradshaw Directory. And then you have the Ace. So just looking at before we jump into, it's interesting because in the middle where you currently are, the present, you go from seven to eight to nine. It's like things are escalating to your death, to your demise. We also have, we have two sevens. And two sevens speak of, you know, self-confidence issues that can cause instability in a relationship. They can also speak of, two sevens can speak of true love. Then you have two fours. Two fours speak of, you know, looking to move, looking to relocate. It also speaks of financial security. And that's 10, and that's a 10. And tens are indicative of completion, but they also speak about ending a relationship or ending a phase. But on the flip side, it can also be indicative of a, like a wedding. So for some of you, you know how you're in this situation right now and you're trying to let the past go, you're trying to go to the future, they're complete opposites. So if it's people, they're completely different people. If it's what you desire in life, it's, it's two completely different things. Like, you know, if in the past you just wanted money, now you want love. Or if in the past you constantly wanted to be traveling and be free, now you want to have some connection. But it's complete opposites. So for like some, it's like, you know, the ending of a relationship, instability in a relationship, true love. So self-confidence issues in a relationship, so you're two seven, self-confidence issues that cause instability and issue, instability and issues in a relationship and true love. So a, a relationship that has a lot of turmoil and trouble and, and problems to having true love and go from, you know, the two tens, ending a relationship into marriage, wedding, commitment. It's like complete opposites. It's a total change of life, but it ends successfully. If you can take those actions, they're saying. Well, let's go ahead and start working our way down the card so we can talk about what those actions are and what's going on here. Okay, so we start off with the Seven of Swords observation. And this is all about, you know, Sherlock Holmes. He was very good. He was very sharp. He was on his A game, but sometimes he did get things wrong. You know, he was infallible. There were times that, you know, he would have the death of a client. Things wouldn't go as he had anticipated. And that's what we're seeing here in this card. We're seeing that he's, he's had a failure of some sort in his endeavors. And, and he leaps up and because he realizes that he's had a failure and he starts throwing his newspaper around and, and trying to hastily set things right, trying to fix things he, because he, he hates failure. He's very anti-failure, doesn't like even to stick with something. So for some of you, you, you had a relationship, a 
could have been a business relationship, could have been a romantic relationship, but, but you had something that failed. And even though it, it, it wasn't meant to continue, it wasn't meant to be a, a long-term relationship, business partnership, rather than have failure, you, you jump through hoops to try and fix it. But this card also talks about very little progress. Of course, the mistakes, you know, unstable effort, self-deceit, things not going as we had planned. So for some of you, you, you had this relationship fall apart and you jumped in to try and fix it because you're like, I will be darned if I'm going to have a failure. I will not have a failure. I am going to succeed even though I'm miserable. This is, this is going to work. Going to make this work. But, but it didn't go as planned. And then you have the Four of Cups analysis. And you see her Watson's like leaning over, touching his heart. He's got his cane gimping around after his injuries in Afghanistan. But Watson was always very cheerful. He was very good lucky, very upbeat, always looking at the positive. But there were times that he wasn't. There were times that even he would be irritated with having to deal with Holmes. Especially there were there was a time that Holmes was uh, Watson was trying to help him get off of his cocaine habit, his drug habit. And he was kind of irritated with it. Also times of having to clean up after him because Holmes would leave a lot of messes. But he would get frustrated. And at times he'd be like bored, dissatisfied. And this card is about being dissatisfied. Being bored with the mundane. Feeling like we're stuck in a rut. You know, boredom in a relationship or friendship. Being dissatisfied and unhappy with life. It can also speak about needing to establish greater emotional maturity so for for many of you you were in a situation where you weren't happy you were bored you wanted to escape you want to leave it. and for a large number of you it, it is related to love you see how he has his hand over his heart and hopefully you guys are seeing these okay i can't from my angle of the camera it looks like you can but i won't know until i actually watch it or upload it for you i don't watch them after i do them hopefully they all turn out okay but for most of you, this was love. You were not satisfied with love. You were not satisfied in a marriage, in a relationship. And, so, and, and for a number of you, there was irritation. A lot of messes. A lot of arguments. Things got ugly. So for a number of you, things got really, really ugly with this relationship. You feel, see, I was almost kind of like leaning over, like having a heart attack. Like, oh my gosh, I can't take this anymore. Um... Like some of you felt like you were dying inside because of it. Like this, this was sucking the life out of you. Then we have a major arcana and this is 12. It's the crooked man. Now in traditional tarot, this would be the hanged man. And this card, so there was this, uh, a client of Holmes. He was trying to help the wife of Colonel Barclay. And Colonel Barclay had, you know, suddenly unexpectedly died. And they thought that his wife had done it. But it wasn't. What was actually discovered is that the crooked man was actually a soldier who worked for Colonel Barclay. And his name was Henry Wood. And he had been betrayed by Barclay. So when he was betrayed, when they were at war, he was held captive. He was tortured. He eventually escaped. He was kind of beat up. And he made it back to go and deal with Barclay. And, you know, this it, it speaks of, you know, a memory of a wrongdoer, someone who's behaved badly, someone who has done you wrongly. But it, it also speaks of, you know, abrupt changes, changes abruptly in direction. But see, he's like, he's like all beat up. So, you know, when somebody joins the military, they're, they're committed, they are all in. So for some of you, you've had to pay a high price for your commitment to this person, for your commitment to this marriage, to this business partnership, to this relationship. And you have just come out on the other side beat up. And this is about actually looking at your options and, and considering other avenues. You know, gaining some insight, but gaining insight because sometimes when we're on the wrong path, when we've been misdirected, when we've gone down a path and we've realized, dang, like he's standing in the pouring rain, it's dark all around him. He has all of his belongings on his little back. He's beat up, he's torn, he's tired, he even has like a rat standing on top of his backpack. I mean, he's on the wrong path. He's been misdirected. But sometimes when we realize that we're on the wrong path, we have that aha, that 
epiphany. We get wisdom. We realize this isn't working for us. We need to cut ourselves free of this. We need to step away from it. And we do that. But this also warns about, you know, not sitting on the fence, actually doing something, being committed to the evidence, being committed to looking at the facts and, and taking action in order to change your life. So for some of you, you are actually the crooked man. You've been in this, this relationship, this situation. You've been lied to. You've been deceived. You feel like you've been left out in the cold. Some of you feel like you had misplaced loyalty. You gave everything that you had to this person. And they left you all, me all messed up, all beat up. He's bow-legged. His hat's ripped. I mean, he's just beat down worn. But you gave everything that you had to this person, to this relationship. When I say relationship, it could be a business partner. And for those of you that are sex, this is definitely a situation about a man. But if this sounds like your situation, your woman, feel free to, to shift it accordingly. But you gave everything to it. And even when, it, they're saying like, there were so many times that they tried to take you away from this person, this situation, they tried to end it. But you're like, I will be damned if I'm going to have a failure. I will go back and I will make it work again and again and again. To every time end up beat up and alone. And then you'd go back. It's, it's almost like this vicious cycle. But you have finally cut that. You've finally broken free of that. But they're saying you're not completely free of it yet. It's like they're showing a wibble, wibble wobble. Like you're indecisive. You, you know, they were saying you, you can't sit on the wall. You have to do something. So it's like you've physically so for some of you you don't live with this person you're you're geographically separated you're in different locations you're not living with them but for some of you you know it's a spouse they're still living in your home because you haven't gone through the divorce proceedings you haven't split up your properties you haven't split up your investments you haven't finalized anything you're like okay well i'm gonna leave i'm gonna go live on my own or i'm gonna start dating around or i'm gonna move on but you haven't closed this chapter because there's something still in the back of your mind that's like there are some of you that are in the situation that just do not want to feel like a failure. But you need to change your perspective because the hanged man is all about also changing his perspective. You'll see in some tarot cards, it's really in how you look at things. It's not to look at this as though it's a failure. Look at it as though you have gained wisdom, that you have grown, that you have developed, that you have now seen what really is going to bring you meaning in life, what's really going to bring you joy. Because sometimes we have to go through heartbreak. Sometimes we have to go through dealing with con men, being used, like get misplacing our loyalty. Because, you know, soldiers are loyal. When an officer gives an order, they will do whatever the officer says. Officer says, get down. I want you to do 20 push-ups for me right now just because I want you to. They'll do that. Officer gives an order when they're in battle that something needs to be done. They will do that. They will follow all orders of an officer. They are loyal to their leadership, to their officers. But his loyalty was like misplaced loyalty. He was betrayed by the person he was loyal to. So for some of you, you were betrayed by your wife. You were betrayed by your girlfriend. You were betrayed by your business partner. But it repeatedly happened for some of you. But it's helped you learn. It's helped you learn what, what is it that you value? What is really important to you? Because for some of you, this relationship wasn't even founded on love. It was um, founded on superficiality. So it's not a failure. It's a success in learning, growing, straightening up, <laughs> straightening your act up. They're, they're saying straightening your act up, getting your act together, realizing you deserve better than this. For some of you, it's almost like they beat you down and you cower. You need to stand up strong and stand up firm. And you know what? I don't deserve this. This isn't a failure. I'm evolving and I am moving on to something a lot better. This is, it looks like a dark card, but this is actually a beautiful card. We'll cover that after we finish going through these. You're destined for greatness. You need to leave this misery behind. Now, as far as where you are currently, you have the Seven of Cups. And Professor Moriarty was like, Holmes' arch enemy. He was like his greatest adversary. They were total enemies. And, you know, Holmes would always say that he was the worst schemer of all times. And he was the organizer of all deviltry and just this evil, dark, crooked person. 
and you see he's standing on t this rooftop and he's looking out over the city and he's looks he has this like look hopefully you guys can see that it's just very cynical and cruel it's like cruel satisfaction and he's overlooking london like it, the city belongs to him in a, in a place of cruelty control and, th and this card's about you know delusional belief in ourself wishful thinking being caught up in unrealistic dreams indulging in addictive patterns building up on things that are short-lived trends or short-lived relationships or short-lived habits illusions unrealistic fantasies it also talks about a need for some emotional discipline so for some of you just broke free of this and you're like okay i'm going to start doing some dark fun activities now started dating sleeping around having relationships um for some it could be you turn to drinking drugs but see how he's still looking in this direction of his past you didn't really let your past go you're still holding on to it and see how he's holding on to paper like this it's like a newspaper so for many of you in the situation this is a, it's a divorce it's a it's a breaking up of a business partner it's also breaking up a business, dividing up your assets, your properties, your investments, but you have to sign the papers to do that. But instead, he's just looking over cruelly like, haha, I've got one over on you. I'm not gonna sign it. Instead, I'm gonna flaunt all my activities in front of you. So for that, some of this was, uh, say this, because many of you it is love. So you were in this relationship with this woman she was very cruel lots of arguments she beat you up beat you down you finally break free of that and you're like well I'll show you now look at me look at who I'm sleeping with look at who I'm dating with flaunting it all over online showing pictures taking that person with your friends and your family just to rub it in this person's face but it's sinister it is a sign of a lack of maturity it's the same cruelty you receive from that person just in a different fashion and for some it's you work for that and you're just drinking you're drinking, you're partying, you're not dealing with business, you're not taking care of things. Because for some of you felt like she was constantly controlling you. Controlling your emotions, controlling your behavior, controlling your activities. Like um, she rolled with like an iron fist. And now you're like, hmm, now I'm that person. But you're not. You get to ignore my grumbling stomach. I haven't eaten yet today. <laughs> when I'm done with your reading, I'm going to get some food. Hopefully it won't grumble anymore. But uh, you're doing these activities to spite your ex, your ex-partner, your ex-lover, your ex-spouse. So you have become what they were that you didn't like about them. They were cruel. They were hateful. They were mean. There, were, there was cheating, lies, deception. You're doing that exact same thing. And it's really leaving you feeling guilty. Yeah, because again, you see it goes from seven to eight to nine. And in this card, you see Holmes is like he's face down. Now, he was, he was very smart. He was on his A game. He was always ahead of his adversaries. He also, he was skilled in martial arts and he was a boxer. He was physically fit. So if there was any potential physical harm, physical confirmation, um, confrontation he could always deal with it but there was an instance where he wasn't able to and he was found almost dead laying in the streets and that information had been put in the newspapers and then Watson was shocked when he read about Holmes being you know near death so he scurried to their office and this would be their office he scurried to their office only to find out that Holmes had purposefully exaggerated his physical condition he made things sound worse than what they really were and this card can speak about you know premonitions worries fears nightmares dreading the, the worst things happening yeah. can also speak of you know a troubled conscious conscience feeling guilty feeling guilty over the things that we've done the betrayals that we've done it also speaks of, you know, feeling as though we're under attack. There's these two shadows over top of him. Feeling vulnerable, despair, grave doubts. The need to have, some, have a disciplined lifestyle and also some disciplined action, committing to logical action, logical thought. 
And it's also about, you know, the inability to take responsibility for ourselves and our path and our actions. So you left this situation that was dark and you went into something even darker. So for many of you, you've, you have indulged yourself in activities and behaviors that make you feel guilty. They are activities and behaviors that you're not proud of, that you really don't actually want to share with someone. Because again, this is, this is the center. This is, you know, discontinuing your plans, changing plans. You have new values. You've reconsidered things, you know, overcoming your fear. Also going inside, because again, he's terrified of talking to the de detective. He's terrified of sharing his lurky past, sharing the truth, having clarity brought about the situation. So you have done things that you are ashamed of. And for some of you, you do not want the truth to come out. For some of you, you don't want to have the difficult conversations. For some, you don't want to, like you're trying to choose between two people, you don't want to have to make that choice. Because for some, it could be having the conversation with the ex of, okay, no, we're really done, no joke, we're gonna sign the paperwork and call it this all, this is all quits, this is done, this malarkey's over. And for some, it could also be a conversation with someone that you have hurt in the midst of this chaos with your ex, of actually sharing the truth. So for some of you, maybe, in the midst and because they're saying you know how some of you this was a cycle you would go in separate directions you'd come back together and, and it was repeated abuse repeated cycle that you refuse to give up on because you're like i'm not going to be a failure during one of your off times some of you met someone else you didn't tell that person that you were already married you didn't tell that person that you were in a committed relationship you didn't tell that person what was going on here you left them in the dark and you do not want to have to own up to it but at some point we all have to take responsibility for our actions. And when we take responsibility for our actions, sometimes we can repair that. Sometimes it's not repairable, but at least we clear our conscience. We can also set the truth, set everything clear, clear everything up. And that's something that, that they're actually needing you to do. Because what we have for the future is the Four of Wands. And this is in his deck, it's, it's evidence. And you see like they're at this casino, they have this wheel in front of them, but they're celebrating. They're celebrating a successful case, the closure of a, of a case that was successful, successful completion of an enterprise, you know, really enjoying the outcome of your efforts, being in a state of harmony, contentment, a harmonious conclusion of something appreciating the pleasures of companionship, consolidating alliances. You see, he's got like, he's holding up this medal. Oh, that's funny. Why are they saying casino? They're actually, they're sitting in a restaurant having a meal, but that looks like a casino wheel. They're uh, taking a risk, but it really is a time of celebration. Um, also uh, starting to, to belong to a group, being welcomed into a group can be acknowledgement of intuitive truths. You know, this was a soldier who was betrayed by his colonel. For many of you, you were betrayed by your, by your partner, but you're gonna end up with a medal of honor because you, by having the courage to go inside, have those conversations, by having the courage to make this decision, you will receive a high honor, a medal. You will be able to celebrate. And for some of you, you know how they were talking like a casino? Like they were pointing this out like a casino wheel. And since I had it turned for you guys to see, I couldn't see the stuff that was being glared at the top. What will happen is when you make the decision, when you get closure, some of you are going to be able to take a leap of faith. Cause you know, when you go to the casino, you gamble, you're, you're taking a leap of faith. You're hoping that something's gonna work out. You're hoping that you're going to win big. But if you're able to do this, you will win big. You will succeed. It does take a leap of faith, however, because again, it's, it's total opposite, po it's polar opposites. It's a complete change in who you are. It's a complete change in doing the way, doing things totally different than you always have. For some of you, it's, you know, you've been ingrained with this person, their family. It's, it's totally shifting out of that. It, but it's total shift and transformation in your life but it will be successful. 
you will reap great rewards. And it will be something that will be worth celebrating. You'll be glad that you did. Because again, like that medal he's holding, looks like the Medal of Honor. It's a pretty big medal. That's a high medal. That's a high award. It's a huge accomplishment. It's, a, it's an honor to receive. So for some of you, you're going to be receiving a, a gift, a divine gift, a, a blessing. Um, so for some of you, you're going to have a divine love. Because see, it, almost, it also kind of looks like a cross. The metal that he's holding. Hope you guys can see that. It looks like a cross. So for some of you, you're going to leave the sex and you're going to find divine love. You're going to find... You could find a twin flame. You could find a, a twin soul. Could be a soulmate. But for many of you, this actual person from your past was, was a soulmate. And, and because soulmates, soulmates can be lovers. They can be friends. They can be family. They can be lovers that also tear your life apart. They're soulmates because you, you've known them from past life. You've made an agreement that you were going to learn something from each other. So like if you, if you meet a friend and you like totally connect right off right off from meeting each other you feel like you've always known each other that person's a soulmate family members are, are also soulmates number of you this person was a soulmate you felt that that instant attraction but it was because there wasn't a lesson that was intended to learn for some it was some karma that had to be paid from past lives now the next card we have this is the ten of pentacles which is ten of deduction you have Holmes he's sitting in front of this tree because he would do a lot of, you know, deductive methods of figuring things out. And there was this one case where they were looking for a lost treasure. And so what he did was he took the ritual instructions that they had and he started to divide it up. And he found that, that it was actually directions and measurements to find the hidden treasure. So he went out to the, to the tree and, and he started to do his calculations and he was able to find the hidden treasure and the truth of this, this ancient mystery. And this is all about, you know, ancestral wisdom, new generations, enjoying the safety of, of heart and home, financial security, belonging to a group, tradition, prosperity, also things that are destined and faded. You see how there's this like silhouette? So for some, and now there's all this light beaming from behind the tree. So for some of you, you have been watched over by the heavens they've been trying to get you out of this to have this complete change in your life to take you to something else something greater something that that you're destined for it's it's a, it's a change but it's something like you have all this this light all this illumination so you know god and the angels they've been watching down over you they've been trying to guide you to this new path to this new this new treasure you know, they were saying it's it's like you're going to be receiving something something divine something faded something that's better than you could have ever imagined they've been waiting for you to come and accept it accept this treasure of yours for some of you it's a treasure that's hidden in plain sight so for some of you this could be a relationship where you you have this cyclical X, you did meet someone else, that person is a divine love, but for some reason you don't see the value in them. You don't think they are, or you downplay it, or you doubt it, or you fear it. You fear a repeat of this, but you've turned them away. Because see this in all these cards, it's just one, actually in all these cards, it's one man, and then these cards have two people, two people, two people, but none of the people are women. But for those of you that there is someone else that you have met, it is a divine love. You're not talking to her. You've, you've cut her off or she has cut you off. But you are not speaking. You see, it's like desolate, this desolate tree. He's a little figure. He's in the shadows. So for some of you, it's not wanting to share the truth. But she's a treasure. She's this reward. She's this success. But it's like you haven't claimed your treasure. That's the way they're saying it's like, it's like a treasure that's, that's hidden in plain sight. But the bad thing with the treasure that's sitting in plain sight, somebody else can come up and snatch your treasure. Which is why for some of you, the divine, they, they have been pushing you. Okay, so the last two cards, this is kind of like you're, you're exiting 
Oh, okay. So this is like things for you to do. So the first one that we have, this is the Five of Cups analysis. And there are so many cups. And cups are all about emotions. You've got cups, 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 cups. So majority of this is about emotions. So those of you in the situation, you're an emotional wreck right now. You have an opportunity to free yourself of it. It is going to take some action. You've got swords, that's all about being stuck in your head. So in the past, not taking actions. Currently, you've got sword. This one's a sword, it's again stuck in your head. Cup, cup. Again, there's zero action, you're not doing anything. And then you end with a wand that's taking some action, that's doing something. Then you've got a pentacle, and then you have a cup, emotions. But there's a lot of emotion in this whole thing. There's a whole lot of inactivity from here into your past. But in order to find these things, to have these blessings, it's time for action. Now this is Five of Cups, and this is talking about, like sometimes they would have these situations where they felt like something supernatural was involved, like divine, like God was involved. And there were things that like Holmes couldn't explain. There are also some things that like he didn't feel like he had any control over. Like there was a time that he was unable to prevent one of, you know, an, another death. There was this family that was killed and, and he was trying to get to the bottom of it. And then in the midst of trying to solve that case, someone was, you know, killed and he wasn't able to prevent it. And he felt as though he was a failure because he, he couldn't stop it. He couldn't avert that death. He couldn't keep that from happening. And this card is all about his, his sense of, you know, delusion and disappointment his feelings of failure, but it's really, it's about not, not focusing on failures because when we focus on failures or what we think was a failure, we feel depressed, we feel sad, we feel like we can't dig ourselves out of it. This is really about learning from your mistakes. You know, noting that, okay, this didn't work for me, I'm gonna need to try something new. Acknowledging grief, acknowledging loss. That, you know, we may regret something, we may be disappointed in something, and although we may have lost something, we've also gained something. This also speaks of broken agreements, delusion, vain regret, learning from our mistakes, assessing our limitations. So for some of you, and again, this is, this is the future row, you're going to, so for some of you, you have you have been in a state of feeling like a failure, feeling like you have disappointed people, feeling as though, you know, you've been disappointed by other people. But this is when that fives are about change, things completely shifting, morphing. So by taking action, they're saying by doing the key, there's some, there's some key, there's something that you have to do. But by doing that, you, you'll be able to free yourself because a lot of you have been stuck in a state of almost like depression, sadness over feeling as though you have disappointed people. You have let them down. You have been a failure. But it's in shifting your perspective to know that, that you haven't. And also to know that this, this change has been divinely guided to break you free of that. Also to break you free of this, this commitment. It could be marriage, it could be a business agreement. It's but to break you of that. They're also saying like a, a change, a change in your behavior, because for some of you, you're non-committal. You make promises and you break them all the time. You can't be counted on. And you feel bad about that. So you have made promises to your ex. You may have made promises to other women. You, you a lot of talk, a lot of promises, a lot of talk, and you don't follow through on them. And now you feel like, Oh my gosh, I've really failed. I've really, I've dropped the ball with her. I've dropped the ball with her and her and her and her and her and her. But this is where it will shift. You can shift that. And you will shift that because in this deciding what, val what you place value on, what matters and what doesn't matter, you're going to realize that you want the stability, you want the security that your behaviors and activities that you have been doing up to this point will not get you that. You are not going to find this success continuing down the path that you are on. But because of that realization, you are going to shift to totally transform and change your life. And you are going to have success and you are going to have beautiful things. 
and you are going to stop those behaviors that do make you feel, some of you do feel guilty about it and you feel you don't have a clear conscience about it. And rightfully so, but we all do things that we're not proud of. But we all learn from that, we grow from that. We heal things with others. We end things with others. But you are going to have a complete transformation. And this contract ending. Yeah, they're saying like contract because for some of you, it's not even a marriage contract. It's some other type of agreement. Now, the last one we have in your future row, this is the Bradshaw Directory, and this is a major arcana. And in traditional tarot, this would be the Wheel of Fortune. And this was this was actually, it was a famous directory in, of the different train times throughout the world. And it was the Bradshaw's Railway Guide. And it was put together by a guy named George Bradshaw. And, and what happened is he started to create it clear back in the 1800s. And when he started, because there were so many railroad tracks and trains, and, and he started out, and it rapidly grew and it overnight became this massive, huge success because there, there were so many different modes of transportation. People need to know what time, what train, where do I go from here? And Holmes actually used this guide because he would, he would use that to figure out different points throughout the country, different train routes, things that he could rely on. So he could rely on those modes of transportation to get him where he needed to go. And although there were different paths he could take multiple ways, they all led to the same the same outcome you know with the wheel of fortune the wheel of fortune it's faded it moves things forward this card is talking about a slick a cyclical change evolution you know fortune things that are faded destined fateful encounters experiences giving and receiving gifts the cyclical nature of life and how it will move you forward the results of your actions change the pattern of your life. So with every action that we take, there's always some form of reaction or repercussion. And, you know, taking a chance, taking a risk and, and knowing that you're not going to suffer from regret, knowing that things will succeed. You know, the things that you're about to come upon may surprise you. Because for some, this is, this is talking about a total change that's faded. It's not something that you anticipated, but it is going to get you to, to what you desire. It also speaks about being adaptable, being flexible. It can also speak of, you know, ne neglected opportunities that come back and haunt you. But they're saying it's like, like if, you fight, if, you, if you fight the change, if you don't go with the change. So again, this is, this is the, the exit card. These are the things to do to have total transformation and, and, and receive this ace that we have right here. So for a number of you, this is about changing your behavior, changing the way, you know, your actions, changing from inaction to action, making decisions, making changes. For some of you, it's also changing the way that you behave, changing from this type of behavior of addictions and um, both partners and this, this behavior that does not make you proud having a change, having a shift. And for some of you, it's a shift in what do you value? Because for a number of you, you want home, you want stability, you want love. You want to place your loyalty with someone that will also have their loyalty with you or you won't be betrayed. You will get that. You are destined for that. You are fated for that. You had a path that you were thinking was going to take you there. So you had this person you thought was going to bring you this. But they're not. You are going to receive this, but it's a different path. It's a different person. And by opening up to that change, opening up, because for a number of you, it is something that's faded. It's destined. It's watched over by God. It is being divinely guided. So for a number of you, you feel like things are totally out of your control. And for some of you, it's really frustrating you. But you're being watched over. Go with the change. Because if you can do that and do the key, we're going to pull the key out here in a second. This is your outcome card. And this is the Ace of Pentacles, it's deduction. And you see he's like standing there, he's holding the gun because, you know, Sherlock Holmes, he was extremely intelligent. He was, he had so much brain power, he was phenomenal. He could analyze things, he could sift through things, he could plan ahead, he could think ahead. You know, he often, 
he very rarely would come to the wrong conclusion. And he was very good at catching his prey, being successful. He was confident in that. He knew that. And this card, it, it's all about, you know, success, contentment, prosperity, happiness, wealth, good fortune. It's about, you know, abundance, attaining the things that will fulfill us, make us happy. It's also about valuing our partner. You got all these twos. Everything here is just one. One person, one person, one person. So for some of you, you were in a relationship. You even felt alone in it. But here's two partnerships, valuing your partner. Making a firm commitment. And by making that commitment, you will receive tremendous rewards. You will receive this treasure, this gift, these things that you desire. It's, it's about you know a new phase of life and a new phase of life that will be successful and bring you all the things that you desire. But that hinges off of you doing the key. Okay, let's see what this key is that there's on. I like it down. Okay. So this is the key to you receiving all this happiness and, and receiving these beautiful things here. And you have Well, they say that these are supposed to be reversed, but I'm going to hold them upright so you can see them. You have the Baker Street Irregular, and then you have the Five of Wands Evidence. Okay, so I'll hold it upright so you guys can see it. This is the Baker Street Irregular, and the, and the Baker Street Irregulars, those were the kids that would help Holmes. He would give them payment. They were very loyal to him. He was like their hero, and he they would go out and try to get tips and information for him. And in this one, you can see that Wiggins is out there and he was going to pick this pocket of this villain and the villain ends up, you know, elbowing him in the head. But it's a total change of his plans. It did not go successful, but this is, it's a catalyst. It's a change for improvement. You know, it also talks about learning to engage, unexpected news, hiding behind a mask because this guy was hidden. He was hidden in the shadows. You know, it talks about an opening, an opportunity for you to shine, for you to change things, for you to turn things around. Now, upright, this is all about, you know, also loyalty. But when it's upside down, which they call the fog with these cards, when it's reverse, it's, it's talking about indecision, instability, someone that's easily influenced, someone that's, you know, overzealous or bored, or they're jumping into things just for the attention someone that's unable to deal with a situation, someone that's unable to deal with the details of a situation. You know, our past history revealing facts about us, revealing the truth about us. Now the other card, which is also reverse. I'll hold it up right so you can see the, the artwork. You see you've got these two guys in this struggle. The one has red hair. Holmes is standing behind them. This is the five. This is the, the wands. So for some of you, you haven't wanted to see evidence. You haven't wanted to see. You've ignored things with this, this ex, this partner. Because you haven't wanted to deal with it. Now this is all about, you see they're like they're in this fight. And so there was this, this guy who ended up being a client of Holmes. And Allie. The locals are getting wound up. They want their dinner too. Okay. So anyhow, so this guy, his last name was Wilson and he had answered this ad. And this ad, they were looking for red haired people to transpose the Encyclopedia Britannica by hand. And so he applied the to the ad. He was all excited because they accepted him, but you know, it didn't add up. It didn't make sense. So when Holmes started to check it out, he found out that they were just trying to get Wilson out of his office so that they could build a tunnel to the bank that was next door to his office. Well, not his office, but the, another person's office. So they were just trying, I mean, he was being hoodwinked. And then you see, you know, Watson subduing this guy, the criminal at the end. But upright in this card, it's, it's all about, you know, arguments, disagreements, you know, distinguishing the difference between rightful intuition, things that we should be doing, and things that are just unfulfilled or unsatisfied desires. Like, are, are you doing it because it's something that you really need to do, or are you just doing it 
because it's something on a whim. You know, it also talks about new facts, new information coming to light, you know, clarity, struggles, battles. Now upside down, reverse the fog. It's all about, you know, long-term disputes needing some arbitration, betrayal and cheating, betrayal and cheating in a relationship or a friendship, passive aggressive manipulation, letting others control you, letting others disempower you. It also talks about, you know, legal actions, court, having court involved, you know, divorce, divorce proceedings. So this is the key for you to have this success. The key for you to have success is to stop, stop your inaction. It's time for you to, to make a decision. It's time to stop letting others control you. It's time to get assistance. It's time to sign papers. It's time to get attorneys involved. It's time to, because for a number of you, you have to go to court. So to dissolve this business, break up the assets, go through divorce, you need an attorney. You need to go to court. You need to bring this to a, to a resolution, to a close. You need to end this contract, which is what they were saying here. In order to proceed out of this, to get these things, it's, it's ending, a con ending a contract. But you also have to stop hiding behind a mask because so for some of you, you there's some, someone that you, that you have to share the truth with and you're afraid of doing that. But you, but you have to share. So some of you, you have to give the truth to others. And for some of you, you need to receive the truth from others. Like some of you, you're refusing to see the truth. And you have to make it, make a decision. Because for some of you, you have been so indecisive and wishy-washy, you're, it's, it's, you're unstable. But by making a decision, by moving forward, by getting the assistance that you need, by getting clarity, getting truth, bringing everything out, taking back your power, this is an opportunity. This is a catalyst. This is the window of opportunity that's faded for you to change your life forever. And you will do that if you can get off the fence and do something. It's time to do something. They're saying you have been sitting on the fence for way too long, way too long. You know, they were saying earlier, like, you know, if you've got this treasure and you leave a treasure out in open sight, someone else is gonna steal your treasure. So for some of you, you know, this big gift, this blessing, this thing that they're trying to bring you, you're gonna miss out on your opportunity. Because we only get divine, like, you know, little fortune things are divine, they're destined, they're fated. But you can only hold up the destiny of other people for so long. And for some of you, they're like, they're saying like, you've held the train up for way too long in the station. So let's pull, let's pull some clarifiers for this whole row. I don't wanna do individuals. Let's do, let's see if there's any other information. This row, this row, that row. And then we'll do these two. And then we'll put a bow on it. Okay. So, let's see if I've given you guys enough space. Okay, almost too much space. Let's bring these back in here. Okay, so for the past, okay, so in the past, you have the trip to the country, the angry woman, and the trap, the prisoner. So in the past, you, you so for most of you, you know, how he's, he has his hand on his heart. So for most of you, this is about love. It's about a romantic relationship. For some of you, it's a romantic relationship that was founded on money. The foundation was money. For some of you, money has gotten involved. So for some of you, maybe you invested in a business of hers. But you, you started this relationship in the past, you know, visiting each other. It was amicable. See, they're riding their little donkeys. They're enjoying conversation with each other. She's, she's angled toward him. He's angled toward her. But things went south and sour. See how angry she is? She's like throwing a chair. She's spewing venom at him. She's kind of evil and possessed. And then you have him. He's like chained. He's in an area where it's not fertile at all. There's no grass. It has like birds overhead, like they're hovering to come down and eat their, eat their dead prey. Um, so you've been a prisoner in this relationship. And an interesting thing, it's not founded on love. You see, you have 
diamonds, you, there's, there's no hearts. It's not, even, it's not even a relationship founded on love. Founded on mutual respect. Money. But it's not founded on love. And you have felt, you've felt trapped. You've, been, you've felt stuck. Okay, let's do what's currently going on. We have the flatter, chattering, and visit. Okay, so we have the flatter. And we have chattering. And then we have the visit. Some of you are playboys. Or playgirls. Again, you can change the sex accordingly. Because again, remember this is, you know, you, the behavior goes from incrementally worse. You go from this dark state of doing things out of cruelty, cruelty to get back to the other person. So for some of you, you are, okay. You have multiple women that you are chatting with, that you are, you're, you're flattering them, you're building them up, you're giving them false promises, false hope. You are making them think there's something more there than there is. Because you're not in an emotional state where you're ready to move forward with anything of meaning or depth. And you're also not used to having something filled with meaning or depth because again, this, this isn't founded on love. This is, for years, a number of you, this has just been filled with anger and control and you have felt stuck, but that's what you've known. And this is the, the Jack of Hearts. The Jack of Hearts, oh, he, he's love. He will flatter the ladies. He will hoodwink them. He will pull them in. He will pay them visits but not going to commit to anything, not going to open his heart, not going to truly connect with someone. So for some of you, so for most of you, you, you know, this, this, these activities, these behaviors that now make you feel guilty, you're regretting these things, is breaking a bunch of hearts, hurting people. You've, because you are a good person. You are a good person. But out of your, your, almost like your momentary rage, you're trying to get back, you started doing things that, that you do regret. And for some of you, you've been caught because you see the two women chatting together. So for some of you, they know about the other women. And it's almost like mediation is necessary. But the, the jack of hearts, he goes around, he, he talks people up, he makes empty promises, he's very charming very makes people think he's all in but in reality this is three if there's three it could be three people could be multiple people but he's not committed to any he's just chatting everybody up there's nothing of depth here there's nothing of depth because he's afraid you're afraid of depth you're afraid of having a real connection. Some of you, you thought this person was. Then you had your heart broken. And then you started doing these things. And now you're realizing you're having this epiphany of this, this doesn't work for me anymore. This way of life, I want something more. I want something with more meaning. I desire that, I want that. But in the meantime, it's clearing all this stuff up. Now, the future back there, let's... Okay, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Gamblers, gamblers. <laughs> they are funny sometimes, my angels. Okay, then we have success. And then we have thought. Now again, this is for the future. So, okay, so there's a couple different messages they're saying. So for some of you, to get to these things, you're going to have to come to the table and have a, have a conversation, closing that chapter. It will be a successful close, closure of the chapter in order to move forward to love. You see how she's leaning on this pot and there's these roses and although she's dropped a rose, almost like she's given up hope. Thinking about it, maybe even praying about it, has her hands crossed, but it's all about love. 
So coming to the table to close this chapter, close that book, you'll be able to move into love, into something. Because for some of you, you've, you've almost, let's say it at some point, that you've almost given up hope on love. Now, the other meaning of what they're saying is, you keep getting stuck in your thoughts. So because you've had some failures, you see how he's had to throw these, these crowns and greens down. See how the divine has a one ready for him? The divine's ready to drop this gift, drop this blessing on his head, to crown him, to bless him with success, success and love. But it is going to take a gamble. It's going to take a leap of faith. It's going to take taking a risk. So some of you, some of you do have someone already in mind. So some of you, you have a person you're contemplating leaving, you do have someone in mind. You're not together though, because again, she's like leaning on the pot, she's dropped a rose, it's all withered and dried up. They're not together. He, he's looking down and toward the past, she's looking down and toward the future. They're, you're not speaking with her. You feel love, you feel a connection with her, but you're afraid that, that you've lost the opportunity. You're afraid that it's withered up and it's gone. You're also afraid that, okay, if she finds out about these other two things that you've done, she might stomp on the rose. But not all hope is lost because the divine is waiting to gift you with the connection with her. So for some, again, this is a, this is a divine love. This is a twin. This is, this is a very strong soulmate that's blessed by the heavens, that's washed over from above. But you are going to have to take a risk. You're going to have to take a leap of faith. But in the future, do you see you taking a leap of faith? Being all in, you know, they throw their chips in. Taking that leap of faith, throwing all your chips in, being all in, you will have success. And it will result in love. Because she's thinking about the same thing you are. You think that it's all dead and there's no chance. She's missing and longing and thinking of the same thing as well. Okay, let's do the ace, your abundance. Okay, so we have Fright, the Consultant, and Tenderness. And again, this is, this is your ace. This is the outcome. If you can do these things, this will be your outcome. We'll do these things and that. This will be your outcome. That's abundance, happiness, fulfillment, a new life, a new phase in life. So for some of you, you were in this relationship because you were the consultant. You were the person that kept everything together. You were the glue. Again, it's not love. It's diamonds. That's money. It's pentacles founded on money. But you were the consultant. You kept things together. You were the glue. You were the person that she came to. I need your help. I need your advice. I need your money to invest. But See how the blade is going to the past? If you can cut this relationship and that contract and your agreement as the consultant, you will go from being in a state of loneliness where you have only been in a partnership for money to actually being in a partnership that's founded on tenderness, that's founded on love. This is the queen of hearts. These are just cold diamonds, cold coins. But it is cutting out the past. And also they're saying it's, it's if you can overcome your fear as well. Because for some of you, you're fearful of having a true connection. You're fearful of opening your heart. You've kept your heart closed. You've kept yourself isolated. But in order to find true love, you, ha you have to open your heart. You have to cut out your fear that's keeping you stuck. And they're saying you're running out of time. You see how they, you've got time right there. The devil's holding the, the, the stopwatch, the clock. It's time for you to overcome your fear. It's time to open your heart. By doing so, you will have tremendous success. You will receive all the things that you're desiring. Now, let's do... Actually, before we do that, let's find out what are these two things that you're trying to decide? <laughs> the consultant, a widow, and a blonde woman. Okay, so this is on the eight, which is the center. 
<laughs> you have three women. Surprise, surprise. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, for most of you, this is this is all about love. So you have the consultant. You have the widow. And you have the blonde woman. Now, you remember he's he's trying to make a decision between two, trying to make a decision between the past, trying to make a decision between the future. So for some it could be she's your past. Could be she's your present and she's your future. Now you have hearts and spades and hearts. So love and this is swords, thoughts and love. They're saying there's differences in these. Okay. She's got this container. They're, they're talking about that container. I want you guys to be able to see it. Okay. So of these, my beat up nails from working on the flowers. Okay. Some of you, you could have, so, so spades or swords, their thoughts. So it could be for some of you, mm -mm -mm -mm. so for some, spades or thoughts, it could really truly be that you are in thought about which woman, this one or this one, could be trying to decide between her and her. And this is you in your thoughts, in contemplation, because swords are all about thought. Others of you, this is three women. You're trying to decide between these two, but you're just with this one right now while you're thinking. This could be the one also that you're, you know, down here when Holmes, he made it sound like he was on his deathbed. He made things look like something different and up here doing things just to spite and hurt her. So it could be that you're simply with her to hurt her. You're all about how it looks and you're just uh, with her while you think things through. So for some of you, okay, we'll cover all three. So for some of you, it could be two or it's three. These women could be similar in age. And these women, for some of you, are older than her. She's younger. Now you notice how these two, these two have like the container. She has like this box, she has like this container. So these two are really, really trying to have you in a relationship, really trying to, uh, to make, you, make you theirs. Like, uh, I don't wanna say control you or trap you or, They're really working hard. They're really working hard to keep you, to like claim you, is what they're saying. They're working hard to claim you. Now, she's very emotional. Very emotional, very overbearing. See how she has a chair? It's interesting, because who had the chair? Oh, the angry woman had the chair. But, but she's got this chair. So she could be very controlling she could try to uh almost like a mother you know you're a bad boy sit down right now you're going to sit here and do what i say like overbearing um and also guilt like uh, makes you feel guilty you know how sometimes you're <laughs> when you're young or whatever you can feel like your mom's giving you a guilt trip like oh you got to do this so for some of you she gives you guilt trips to make you do what she wants you to do and she's very controlling and she wants to she wants to contain you she wants to to own you, to entrap you. Now for her, she's all about the look. Um, she's, for some, she could be vain. She could be all about how she looks, her presence, her image. For some of you, you're only with her because of the image of how it, it makes you look. And same thing. Now she's got a bigger container than hers. 
Maybe she thinks, oh, I got a better chance at catching him. And we'll put him in here and zip him up tight. But the third, she has no container. She's not planning to trap you and catch you. Now, if you'll notice, she has her arms bared. She has her neck bared. She has been, she's emotionally bared herself. She's got all these hearts. She's emotionally bared herself. She's opened up. She's been honest and forthright. These two are totally covered from their wrists all the way up. Their necks are covered. They've got these big hats. She's even got a tiny hat. She's holding a massive hat. But they're totally covered. They're concealed. They're not sharing their full intent. There's been a lot of lies, deception, things hidden, false masks, false intentions. For some of you, these two have not, have not been honest, have not been forthright. Their true intentions haven't been shared. And their feelings haven't been shared. Now, for, you see, she has roses. She's, sn she's smelling a rose. She's holding roses. She's got a rose on her belt. Her intentions are love, is what they're saying. Hopefully you can see that with no glare. But her intentions are love. She's communicated that as well. And she has this cross. You can see that. She's got a cross on her neck. <laughs> That's funny. This, this reward, this, this medal of honor. The cross and the cross. So for some of you, she's, she's the treasure. She's the treasure out in the open. She's the treasure that you didn't find any value in, which is why, could be why at this point, she has no intentions of trying to catch your attention and trying to be with you. So she has her foot out. Kind of like look at my pretty fancy shoe. It's a ballerina. So for some, she's had her heart broken. She's faced heartbreak because of you but she still learned how to dance in the rain. She's still dancing and she's moved, she's moved on. Coming into a state of enjoying love, taking time to stop and smell the roses. She's coming to pure intention. <laughs> the shoe. Cinderella, you know Cinderella, she needed to have the shoe. She's your fairy tale, she's your Cinderella. Now that's interesting. You know, these three cards, it's cut the past and go from not being a consultant. So for some of you, this is the, the past because you have the three ladies. You have him standing in the center of the door, bam. You have the past and then you have what the future. Now they could be in different orders, but for most of you, that's actually their order that they're in your past, your present, your future. But you haven't completely closed the past with her because you remember to have this ace, to have this abundance, fulfillment, happiness, everything that you desire. You have to cut out, you have to get attorneys, you have to end this thing with her. And when you look at it, it's interesting because if you put them facing each other, now again, this is the outcome, so this would have him on this side, which is what's intended because that death card is saying, it's time to end this. It's time to end that. It's time to break free of that because you are, you're, the consultant. you're the consultant. Now the interesting thing is, when you look at these, he has the diamonds, pentacles, money. She has these hearts, love. So for many of you that were in this relationship, you were in it for love. She was in it for money. Again, that's why you're now reevaluating what, what, what matters to you, what it is that you want. Because for most of you, you want happiness, you want joy, you want requited love, you want a firm foundation, and you won't find it with your past. Okay. That's it on those. And last, your keys, what you have to do. And that's these two cards. Again, get out of your end ability, not making any actions. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. 
you have loss of money. Quarrel. And lawyer. So the two of you have been battling for a very long time. And you've been battling over money. Even if initially that's not what you were fighting for, could have been that you were fighting for, I, I don't want to be a failure. I'm going to make this work. I want love. I, I think there's hope. I think this can turn around. The whole foundation was simply, because again, this is the consultant. They're not, it's not the lovers. It's not the male lover. It's not the female lover. They're consultants. They just assist each other. They just help each other. That's it. It's cold. There's no love. There's no emotion. It's really founded on money. And for some of you, even if you thought it was love early on, it's now just gotten to the point that you're also fighting over money. You don't want to lose money. And so the two of you have been at it. It's been ugly. That's why you also haven't done anything. You've not had those conversations. You're sitting outside because you're afraid to have that conversation. You don't want to clear things up. You haven't wanted to sign paperwork, but the time has come. The key to ending all of this is to hire hire an attorney. Now, some of you do have an attorney, but you're just not moving anything forward. For some of you, you even have the paperwork and stuff to sign and you've refused to sign it. But that's the key. That's the key for you to move forward. The key is you have to end this quarrel over money. You have to end this agreement, this contract. It's time to finally move it forward. So hopefully that helps. That was really long. We're probably an hour. Oh, of course, we're, oh my gosh, we're way over an hour. You guys have to break that into a couple pieces. That's what we get with my new cards. I knew they'd be interesting. They are, but there's a lot of detail to them. So hopefully that helps all of you. Do wish you all the very best. <gasps>